I'm Dylan Davies. And I'm Mitchell Kane. And this is our project on post-op slap leash and rehab. So this is our patient. Her name is Sally Sachs. She's 35 years old. She's an investment baker and she likes to rec recreationally golf. Um, she's suffering from a superior labral tear from anterior to posterior in her right shoulder, also known as a slap leash. So more specifically about her injury, she, she's an enthusiastic amateur golfer. She loves to escape her uh, Monday routine as an investment baker to hit the fairways on the weekends. The only problem is she's never learned proper mecha swing mechanics and has not bent her elbows properly, resulting in overuse of her shoulder during her backswing. She noticed a clicking and popping sound and sensation in, in uh, her shoulder every time she lifts her arm above her head or moves her arm across her body. She went to the doctor and underwent an MRI which confirmed that she had a type two slap tear or lesion on her right shoulder. Her doctor recommended that she see a PT to discuss her options for rehab. So what exactly is a slap tear or a lesion? Slap lesions appear on the superior lip of the glenoid labrum, just under the origin of the long head biceps, brachii tendon, and on the left is a healthy one, on the right is a one that's torn. Uh, slap lesion can occur as a result of acute trauma, usually a boot injury or falling directly onto your shoulder, or as a result of chronic microtrauma, such as um, Sally's case right here. Symptoms of a slap tear include aching, throbbing pain, deep within the shoulder joint, popping or clicking upon movement of the shoulder, especially moving the arm, like I said earlier, overhead or across the body, and often a feeling of weakness or instability in the shoulder. Labral tears, if left untreated, can worsen and, and progress to a higher uh, category of tear and can also have adverse effects on the muscles surrounding the shoulder. So I'm gonna go over the non-operative rehab, rehab plan and it consists of NSAIDs, and a physical therapy protocol that consists of a core strengthening program and a rotator cuff strengthening program. Um, benefits of the non-operative rehab plan are that they usually benefit the uh, functionality of the shoulder and decrease the patient's pain, and it's non-invasive, unlike surgery. Um, so often it reduces time in recovery and rehab. Effective return to sports was comparable with those who had the treatment, the surgical treatment for overhead, except for overhead athletes. Drawbacks include pain relief and functional improvement. Um, aren't, they aren't always achieved. And although return to sports was comparable, like I said earlier, uh, return to overhead sports, uh, you won't go to the same level you were before most often. And exercises for this plan include T-band shoulder, horizontal adduction, serratus punches, and eyes and Ys. So phases of rehab and goals for each phase for non-operative. Um, in phase one, we're gonna focus mainly on decreasing the pain and inflammation if it's there. So to achieve that, we're gonna use modalities such as, like I said, NSAIDs earlier, and a combo treatment of cryostim. Um, in phase two, we're gonna uh, focus mainly on early ROM, so increasing her horizontal shoulder adduction from 90 degrees to 100 degrees. 20 degrees within three weeks of the start of treatment. Uh, like I said earlier, an exercise to do this would be getting a T-band and horizontally adducting. Uh, phase three, we're gonna focus on increasing proprioception and uh, muscle strength and muscle, manual muscle tests of shoulder adduction and flexion. We're gonna increase it from a three out of five to a five out of five within five weeks of the start of rehab by having the patient do weighted eyes and Ys, which I'll get into more in a second. Phase four, we're gonna prepare the patient to return to full participation in golf within two months of the start of rehab by introducing a sport-specific exercise such as having the patient take a weighted cane or actual golf club and have her go through the swing motion to uh, properly uh, benefit her biomechanics. So, like I said earlier, these are the exercises that I just went over um, for the rehab plan. What I'm gonna demonstrate is called eyes and Ys. It's where you take your dumbbells, or in this case, the staplers, and you're gonna instruct the patient to straighten their arms out and take their arms up in a forward direction, making an I, and then a Y direction, just like that. So after discussing that, um, our decision was based off of many reasons, but we decided to go out with surgical treatment 
And um, the main reason being, like I said earlier, return to play at the same level for overhead sports uh, doesn't happen. So with, with golf being a semi-overhead sport with the golf swing, uh, we, we decided that surgical treatment was best. Um, some other factors that also went into this were that she's young, or relatively young, she's 35, so she can handle the surgery, and her job is a, as an investment banker. Um, her recovery process won't really affect her work. Yeah. All right, so since we decided to go with having the surgery, uh, we came up with a uh, post-op rehab plan. So um, what it includes, uh, of course, the arthroscopic surgery itself that is going to repair the damaged uh, labrum. Um, so after the surgery, she's going to be in a sling for about four to six weeks, kind of holding her in internal rotation as well as uh, elbow flexion. And um, some benefits of this uh, procedure uh, is going to increase the long-term viability of her returning to play for overhead sports and not becoming re-injured. And um, it also reduces the risk that she will um, have a worse injury of her labrum, so um, her grade two slab lesion won't progress to a grade three or four if we patch it up. And also the surrounding tissue can be uh, more effectively healed if the labrum itself is healed. So of course the drawbacks of any surgery is that it's invasive, you're cutting into the body, of course you're uh, exposing the patient to infection then. Um, so also the patient's shoulder will be largely immobilized for that four to six weeks following the surgery. And um, the total time for rehab and return to play will be increased because of that. And um, especially for our overhead athletes, we can't return to overhead sports for about six to eight months. And uh, elbow flexion and external or shoulder external rotation are uh, some really uh, bad motions for us here. Um, because of that biceps tendon. And um, exercises like shoulder pendulums and uh, TheraVan shoulder internal rotation as well as push-ups in the later stages will help her to get back to play. So um, here are the phases of rehab for our post-op. So for phase one, um, she's going to be largely immobilized, not able to do much. So our primary goals here are just decreasing pain and swelling. So we want to increase pain from eight out of 10 to four out of 10 within three weeks following that surgery. Um, she's going to remain in the sling for this entire phase, but uh, she can get some like little elbow flexion going from her sling position at like 90, 100 degrees and up, as well as some hand pumps to just kind of mobilize some of those muscles in her arms. And uh, she's going to be given NSAIDs, and uh, we're also going to do some crowd therapy and e-stim for pain and swelling management. Um, so for phase two, uh, we're going to work on mobilizing that shoulder joint again. Uh, so. Our goal here is to increase shoulder abduction from 90 degrees to 135 degrees uh, at, within five weeks following the surgery. So um, some ways we can uh, uh, work on this is uh, self-mobilization. So a good example of self-mobilization are these shoulder pendulums. So just like in the picture, the patient's going to kind of bend over um, and place their hand on a chair or a table or something like that and dangle the affected arm down and she's just going to gently swing it forward and backward, left and right, and also in circles. So this so will just kind of work on mobilizing that shoulder joint, increasing range of motion. So for phase three, um, we want to work on some strength and proprioception, uh, we're getting those two. So uh, we're going to, our goal is to increase uh, our MMT score for shoulder internal rotation from three out of five to five out of five. Uh, within seven weeks following surgery, this will also help to stabilize against excessive external rotation. So um, we're gonna do uh, some TheraVan um, internal rotation exercises here. So place it in a door or something and uh, make sure we bolster in her arm and also ensure she doesn't go past like uh, 90 degrees into uh, external rotation. And we're just going to internally rotate with a TheraVan. And so for phase five, uh, we're gonna work on increasing all of her strength and um, getting her ready to return to play. So all of her shoulder MMT scores uh, should be five out of five within 10 weeks following the surgery. And she's going to hopefully return to play uh, golfing within six to eight months following that surgery. So um, we're gonna be doing some dynamic stabilization and strength stuff. So um, BOSI wall push-ups are gonna help us here. 
So get down on the BOSU ball, and it's unstable. She's gonna have to stabilize herself and also push herself up and down, increasing strength and proprioception. And uh, once that's done, we can move on to using a golf club. So here's our sources. Thank you.